So in the last video, I made a, an impassioned plea, maybe, for uh, hand coding. I'm going to make another one now for what is usually called web standards. Now, some people say uh, it's almost kind of hard to find people who will argue against web standards. Everyone says, oh, web standards are good. It's just a question of how closely they follow their, their commitment to that. And in this course, we're going to push hard for this idea of web standards. What is a web standard? Well, um, the just like the internet itself and like the protocols that build up the internet, the way the web works is based on agreement. We agree to write web pages in a particular way, and browsers agree to a greater or lesser degree to, um, to render them the way we expect them to. So in order for that to all work, we all have to have a standard that we work toward. And the World Wide Web Consortium comes up with these standards, things like HTML and XHTML. So at a very basic level, standard standards-based um, production suggests that you follow the standard, that when you create something, you create code that doesn't just work, but that actually works to the agreed standard of the code. And so we want to produce stuff that isn't just enough. I mean, in any kind of production process, there's a little bit of tweaking things to get them to work, and that's fine. And it was I can't imagine that there's a way other than to do that. Um, but in that process, I expect that the outcome, the outcome, the code that comes out of this, is standards based. So why should you do this other than to feel good about doing it the right way? Um, you know, for those of you who are not a big fans of of grammar, you might say, ah, you know, you're just making a spell in the traditional way or, or write in the traditional way for no other reason than upholding the standard or the expected. Um, and and uh, I can understand that, um, but your core principle here should be to communicate to an audience. And if you don't adhere to the standard, it's difficult to do that. One of the things that standards provide for is accessibility. Um, many people don't think about the fact that people will be people that are visually impaired will be trying to interpret their website. People that have other impairments might have difficulty in accessing their material if it's not held to a particular standard and if you don't think about accessibility in the front end. Now the nice thing about thinking about accessibility is that when you do that, you hit not just those who are physically handicapped in some way, um, but those who are coming from a very broad diversity of approaches to accessing your materials. Everything from people who are designing programs that make it easier to understand that material to those uh, uh, coming to your material from portable devices um, and for de from devices that may not even have been invented yet. So by adhering to the standard, you future-proof your site, you uh, provide it to the largest possible uh, group of users, and you don't frustrate people. If you think this is obscure, um, I went to uh, a movie the other day, uh, and uh, down at Lincoln Center, and came out of the movie, and and uh, my partner and I were looking and saying, okay, let's have let's have lunch, and we said, okay, there are a couple of restaurants I remember. Let's pull out our phones and take a look and see what the menus look like. One of the phones was flash based. I'm sorry, one of the the uh, the uh, sites was flash based, and for whatever reason, it wasn't rendering on my phone. Um, normally, that wouldn't have been a problem, but in this case. For whatever reason, it would have worked fine on a website, but it wasn't working on the phone. The other one was a, a standard text-based site, um, and uh, and I got the menu, and that's where we ended up going. Now, this is one restaurant bill, but chances are, even if you're not designing for a restaurant, you want to, people to come to you first. And to do that, you need to make sure that, um, that you have thought about accessibility and standards. Now, the takeaway from that message might be to not use Flash, Although uh, I'm not a big fan of Flash, that's not the intended takeaway. The intended takeaway is that you need to plan for the people who are accessing your material with the barest minimum. That means that even if they're not using JavaScript or CSS, the core HTML should render on its own fine. It should gracefully, gracefully degrade. That is, that it should work great for people who are in a very high-end setup with all the plugins and everything working. And it should work equally well for those that have a basic setup or have different requirements for viewing the site. Um, so throughout, we're going to focus on everything that you do should actually go through the validator and should be valid code. And we should be thinking about things like accessibility and like graceful degradation. All right. Um, that pretty much ends us on the same note that we started this section with. 
that is this idea of working towards an agreement. Um, this is the end of the first kind of laying the groundwork segment. Um, as we go into the next one, we're going to be diving into HTML and creating correct HTML documents. I'll see you there. Thank you.